I love Stephen King. I gotta admit it, I like his style as an author, but it is true that that trendy attitude of mocking the endings of his stories is justified. He has fumbled the ball in the final act very often. It's true, but it's not a golden rule. While there are admittedly some dud endings, the endings on this list comprise 10 of the best he has ever written, absolutely nailing the close of the story in perfect time, even if that time is over a thousand pages later. So spoilers ahead, and let's take a look at the 10 endings Stephen King actually got right. 10, 11, 22, 63. Jake Epping is a classic King character in a relatively recent novel. He is given the chance to travel back through time and prevent the assassination of President Kennedy, an event that is described in the novel as a turning point in the history of the world, one that affected everything that followed for the worse. The catch is that Jake can't choose the time he goes back to. It will always be 1958 when he arrives, so if he travels back into the future, he will not be able to get back to the life he quickly establishes for himself. While in the past and preparing for a date with Destiny, he meets, saves, and falls in love with Sadie. This sets off a chain of events, which sadly results in her death, although Kennedy is ultimately saved. Time pushes back, though, as when he returns to the future, he sees that the world has been all but destroyed with Kennedy's survival. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't especially care for this bit. It felt a bit cheesy with the whole dystopian future thing, but the very ending of the book is actually really cool. Because either way, Jake has to reset time and keep it so JFK dies. But he's left with the option of staying in the past, living his life with Sadie together. Downside to this is that the book makes it clear that doing so risks the entire world, as messing with time is serious business. In the end, he decides to reset time as if he did nothing, and skip out on an extra shot at happiness with the woman he loves. However, his decision to let her fate unravel without his interaction ends up leading, in the novel's final scene, to a beautiful reunion. It's not a conscious reunion per se, but one of souls. Jake does, in a way, get his happy ending. 9. The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon This is a simple novel, closer in length really to a novella. Trisha, a nine-year-old girl, becomes lost in the woods and has to learn to survive while the cops and her family search for her. What could very easily become a silly story ends up becoming a taut, thrilling story of endurance. Throughout her tale, as she begins to succumb to the elements, she begins to hallucinate that the god of the lost is following her, waiting for her to drop her guard. She sees visions of her family and her hero, Tom Gordon. These visions keep her going, forcing her to continue on until she finally finds a road that leads to civilization. Before she can leave her situation, a bear crosses her path. Trisha, in her nine-year-old's mind, sees the bear as a manifestation of the God of the Lost, standing up to it by launching her Walkman at it, exactly in the same way that her hero Tom Gordon would pitch a baseball. Though aided by a hunter who comes upon them both, she is saved and brought back to her family, certain that it was her hero that helped her all along. This is a simple, lovely little tale, one where the ending absolutely pays off. 8. The Running Man This is another one of Richard Bachman's novels, which King describes as being something of the dark half of himself, and yes, that is the inspiration for where the dark half novel came from. The Running Man is another dystopian story following a game show with lethal consequences. Entrants are picked up with only one possible fate, to die at the hands of the hunters. For every hour they remain alive, they earn $100, with an additional $100 for every hunter they kill. If an entrant can stay alive for 30 days, they can win the grand prize of $1 billion. Ben Richards is the protagonist here, taking part in the games to find the money for his daughter's medication. Despite his every effort and beating the record for the amount of time a man has survived the game, he is finally cornered, though he manages to take a hostage and hijack a plane. It is on this plane, however, that he discovers the wife and child he was running to protect died before he had even begun the game killed by mob violence in their neighborhood. With nothing left to lose, he releases his hostage via parachute and kills the crew of the plane. He aims it for the main headquarters of the network that runs the game, exploding in an inferno that lights up the sky. It is a dramatic and tragic ending, a pushback against the futility of his contemporary world. 7. Gerald's Game before the recent Mike Flanagan adaption, Gerald's Game was not one of the more popular novels in King's repertoire. Yet it is a fantastic read with a truly spine-tingling ending. The titular game is that Jesse is handcuffed by her husband to the bed in a bid to spice up their sex life. However, Gerald suffers a heart attack, dying, and leaving Jesse in a 
difficult position, to say the least. The book is enthralling, holding the reader's attention as Jessie suffers from dehydration and hallucinations, building towards a gruesome third act. The book is a story of Jessie's determination and will to survive. Her escape, by slashing the flesh of her hand so badly that it peels away almost as a glove would, is both awful and fantastic, proving her resilience in the face of death. 6. It that scene that readers often remember towards the end of It was mercifully taken out from both the 90s and more recent adaptations of It. While that is a scene that somewhat taints the third act of the novel, the actual ending of the book is as close to perfect as it gets. The losers have begun to go their separate ways. Their memories of their battles with Pennywise are fading again, though the events of the novel have still forever changed them. With over 1,000 pages of text, it would be very hard for it not to change them. Bill is still in Derry with Audra, his wife. She fell victim to Pennywise's deadlights, the powers that suck the soul from the bearer. She is a shell, but he refuses to give up on her. His last weapon is a bike that saw him through many of the nightmares and adventures of his childhood, Silver. He sits her on the crossbar and he begins to pedal. Some of the magic remains because as he gains his speed, she wakes up, called back from the deadlights, crying out for him. With utter joy, the novel ends with Bill and Audra reunited, free from it at last. 5. Pet Cemetery. Pet Cemetery is an infamous novel for being the one that King said was his scariest. On finishing the first draft, the manuscript went into a drawer, remaining there until he was in the right headspace to attack it again. The death of a child is a horrific thing for anyone to have to deal with, though when that person has access to a burial ground that can raise the dead, there really is only one way the story is going to go. The evil of the cemetery is something akin to nature being corrupted. There is almost nothing more innocent than a toddler, so for a toddler to become the bringer of death is a supremely terrifying thing. The final moments of the book are like a look into hell itself. Louis Creed has lost his son, regained his body, but lost the boy's soul. Through his foolishness, he also loses his wife. Rachel, depicted throughout as struggling but trying to support Louis in his grief, falls victim to the being that has possessed Gage, her resurrected son. Louis, now trapped in his own hell and going crazy, puts down his son but brings his wife's body up to the cemetery. In the last line of the book, her hand clasps Louis's shoulder and we all know he's damned. 4. Revival Revival is King's take on the Frankenstein story, with Reverend Jacob stepping in for the Mad Doctor and Jamie Morton being the Igor character. However, King naturally takes the dark twist on the story even further than Mary Shelley did all those years ago. Jacob's crime is to use electricity to cure various people of illnesses. This is seen as a miracle cure by the recipients, yet for Jacob's, it's all a means to an end. He travels from town to town, years after he loses his wife and child in a horrific car accident, experimenting with the power in his hands. Ultimately, he plans to revive a woman from the dead using his electricity. Though he succeeds, he's shown a portal into the next world, a Lovecraftian hellscape full of misery and doom. The act kills Jacobs and costs every patient of his to suffer immediate and horrific side effects, resulting in many, many murders. Revival is King's take on playing God, offering a dark view into the mind of a madman. 3. The Long Walk the Long Walk is the first novel Stephen King ever wrote, although it wasn't his first published. It is an ultra-dark story, depicting a contest that is not unlike Battle Royale or The Hunger Games. The titular walk is a simple premise. 100 boys start walking, and the last one standing gets to stay alive, and get surprise of whatever they want. Although there is much discussion as to what the boys would wish for if they win, the prize itself is never really the goal. Simple survival and victory against the pain of the event. That's what you're really fighting for. Garrity, the protagonist, is the last one left alive, but there is a large catch. He may have lost his mind by the walk's close, having watched 99 other boys drop at one point or another. He hallucinates cars and people trying to stop him from walking. Terrified for his life, he summons the last of his strength and starts to run. It's a bleak ending, with no mention of this event being cancelled, and as the story closes, not much hope for Garrity either. 2. The Stand The Stand rivals the Dark Tower for Stephen King's magnum opus, detailing the epic showdown between good and evil, told in the landscape of a virus-ravaged USA. When first published, it was missing an enormous chunk, which was restored in the 90s, thankfully. The ending of the story details the sacrifice in the name of good by some characters, the destruction of others, and an ever-existing form of evil. 
Stephen King is nothing if not a visionary, with his depiction of the Kingdom of the Beast being Las Vegas. This kingdom, the height of decadence in America, is leveled, and Flag, one of King's greatest villains, survives the destruction of hell. He instead rises again with a savage tribe, arriving on their shores as a new messiah ready to share his dark gospel again. It's a downbeat ending to what is, oddly, a sort of upbeat ending to the epic. The Stand remains one of King's best work, and one, Doctor Sleep. Doctor Sleep, as the sequel to The Shining, has an ending that not only suits this one novel, but the story of Dan Torrance as a whole. While the ending of The Shining novel saw the Overlook Hotel burned to the ground, Dan still lives with the ghosts well into adulthood. Like many of King's characters, he's grown into an alcoholic, battling his addiction with frequent relapses. His final indignity is stealing from the wallet of a lady he picks up, leaving her screaming baby unattended in her apartment. The novel is as much the story of his crawl back to himself as it is the story of a travelling group of vampires attacking children for hundreds of years. Mike Flanagan's adaptation is a wonderful version of the tale, though it sticks closer to a sequel of Kubrick's film than King's novel. However, the ending of the novel does see a showdown on the site of the Overlook, with an apparition of Jack Torrance allowing Dan a last measure of closure. Dan, finally recovered from his struggles and new responsibilities, builds a new life for himself, one free of the ghosts of his past.